wouldn't believe how taxpayers' money is being wasted here. You, as a political project, are in denial. The money has not gone to the right people for the right purpose. The European Union has no shortage of critics. It's a gravy train, they say. They may have a point, says this man. Robert McCoy's entire working life was spent working within the EU. But when he uncovered potential fraud, a campaign of harassment began, he says, that robbed him of his career and his health. It's a battle he's been locked in for almost two decades, a battle that's still raging. This building represents and reminds me of all the, the, the thuggery which took place to, towards me when I discovered and reported the fraud. Local politicians come from all over Europe to sit on the Committee of the Regions. They don't get a salary for it, but they can claim a daily allowance to attend and travel expenses. Robert discovered what was really being claimed for. It was cheating on expenses, basically. I had a, a former president who would arrive at an airport and uh, he'd arrive at the airport at 11.40 in the evening and have a meeting at 11.50 in the evening. It was a bogus meeting. It was just purely to justify the payment of an extra 500 euros or 450 euros at the time. There was a lady from Paris. She used to travel, to, travel on several occasions to Brussels in a local, uh, local authority car, chauffeur driven, and then put in uh, first class rail travel on the basis of, uh, of a used TGB ticket with the, with the date which had been obliterated by Tipex. I had a former president of the Committee of the Regions who would uh, put in for nine days uh, allowances, which is 550 euros a day at the time, um, for, a, for a visit to the Loire Valley. Um, whereas, in fact, the official invitation was for only two days. Expenses fiddles. You remember those. Back while our MPs were buying duck houses and dredging moats for second homes, European politicians weren't to be outdone. The COR reacted fiercely to the fine tooth comb with which Robert went through their claims. So he went to an MEP who sat on the Budget Control Committee of the EU Parliament. Good to see you again, Michiel. Good to see you. This MEP at the time estimates the misuse Robert found ran into the millions. Not that his fellow parliamentarians appreciated his input. They weren't happy at all uh, because at the time, and to some extent that's still the case today, uh, anybody who questions the way an EU institution operates is considered as being anti-European. Uh, and uh, so there was pressure put on me to, to tone down uh, the, uh, the, the work we were doing in the Budget Control Committee because they felt it was an attack on, uh, on Europe. But the pressure put on McKeel was nothing compared to the campaign of fear Robert says he was subjected to by the COR. It was initially threats uh, to, to toe the line. Um, I had threats against my family, my children, etc., etc. Uh, threats against your family? Yeah. I, I, well, I used to get phone calls, in the, anonymous phone calls in the middle of the night. Um, I'd go in in the morning at 6.30 to my office and I'd know that people had been rifling through my, my papers. The toll of what Robert says went on in this building was severe. In 2004, he had a breakdown. I spent 12 weeks in hospital. Uh, I couldn't sleep. I was having panic attacks. I couldn't concentrate. I was totally uh, incapable of working. I think there were, I've been examined, I think it's by 23 specialists. The unanimous of conclusions are that I had a burnout and suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder, yeah. The, I think, uh, funnily enough, the, only the Committee of the Regions doctor does not agree with this. And crucially, Without the COR doctors accepting that his illness was caused by the harassment he says he suffered, after 15 years of fighting, nothing has been resolved. Since first blowing the whistle, Robert's case has been investigated by the European Parliament. That led to eight separate parliamentary resolutions. There have been three judgments by the European Courts of Justice, all in Robert's favour. And yet, despite all of that, the EU Committee of Regions has still never accepted Robert as a whistleblower never compensated him for his years of missed earnings, never given him an apology. There are some MEPs who want to end this ugly saga. To speak to them though, we have to head to Strasbourg.
all aboard the EU Express, a special train needed because every four weeks for just four days and at a cost of £150 million a year, the whole of the European Parliament transfers from Belgium to France. Within this palatial second parliament, Robert has his backers, but they explain his major problem. What he uncovered is just a drop in a vast and troubled ocean. There is massive fraud. We're talking billions. So, you, you know, we have one budget control committee dealing with all of that. So then, you know, then the question is, what, what will be the priority? Um, and I'm afraid that this is, is not on the top of the priority list as unfortunate and unjust as it may be. Much has changed in this place since this entire saga began. The whistleblower legislation for one, which is now clearly defined. Yet the Committee of the Regions still does not recognize Robert as a whistleblower, something he so desperately wants. To find out if they should, we traveled to Birmingham to speak to the man who was president of the COR when Robert first went public with his concerns. But the ex-president, still doesn't accept that fraud took place. Well, I, I have to question your use of the word fraud. Uh, the anti-fraud unit, and I will use their words, talked about systematic and fragrant incompetence and endemic culture of unprofessionalism. Now, I can subscribe to that because of what I now know happened in a period uh, in 2000, uh, 2003. Do you consider Robert McCoy to be a whistleblower? Under the framework we now have, I think that in all probability the CWAR would have seen him as a whistleblower. So if it would do now, why not just apply that retrospectively? I don't think it's as easy as that. You deal with things uh, with whatever the rules, etc., are at the time. The COR sent us this statement about Robert McCoy's case. They say, the Court of Auditors found no evidence of fraud, the very few expenses that were wrongly claimed were repaid. Now the reformed expenses and allowances system is fully audited and overseen by the European Parliament. On whistleblowing, they say, the committee has rules in place for any future cases which would prevent a situation such as Mr McCoy's from arising. Mr McCoy retired in 2010 and receives a substantial EU pension allowance and add balanced panels of medical experts have not so far determined that the origin of its invalidity was professional. Brussels is a city, say the critics, full of faceless institutions run by unelected Eurocrats, spending taxpayers' money on what they will while answering to nobody. Few have ever gone up against it like Robert McCoy. Does he now share that view of Europe? You must be over the moon about Brexit. You're joking. No, 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 not at all. Really? We must stay in. We must stay in. Even after everything you've been through? Yeah. You don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Robert McCoy, a man out of work, out of pocket, but still in love with Europe.